Now we're going to look at preparing formal business reports. A formal report is a document in which a writer analyzes findings, draws conclusions, and makes recommendations intended to solve a problem. It is the product of thorough investigation or analysis and presents organized information to decision makers in business industry, government, and education. And informal and formal business reports have similar components which we discussed in the previous presentation. We looked at a figure, figure 10.2 in your book that compared informal and formal reports. So let me pull that up real quick for us just to look at one more time. Here you can see the informal and you can see that the formal has a lot more information than the informal. The steps to follow in writing a formal business report is first um, determine the purpose and scope of the report. A purpose statement defines the focus of a report and provides a standard that keeps the project on target. A scope statement prepares the audience by clearly defining which problem or problems will be researched and analyzed. Limitations are, as part of the scope statement, these further narrow the subject by focusing on constraints or exclusions. The, te the textbook provides the following um, example of a purpose statement. So here is the textbook's example. To recommend adding three positions to our sales team, writing a job description for the sales team leader, and establishing recruitment guidelines for sales team hiring. So that's what a purpose statement would look like. And it's giving you, it's basically telling you what the purpose of the report is about. Um, you want to anticipate the needs of the audience. You may have to give the audience the background information depending on what the audience may be familiar with. And then you want to decide on a work plan and appropriate research methods. And a work plan is just a tentative schedule that guides the investigation. And then the problem statement helps clarify the task and define the report's purpose and scope. So we're going to take a look at a, an example of a work plan. So you can see it defines the purpose, scope, limits, and significance. So here's your statement of problem, statement of purpose, and then it describes the primary and secondary data. And then it has an outline. And then it factors problems into manageable chunks. And then down here is the work schedule, the estimated time needed to complete report tasks. So that's what a work plan looks like. And this is the work plan for Lee Jean's One True Fit Line. Once you have your work plan, it's time to conduct research using primary and secondary sources. Secondary research would be the use of data that's already there. It already exists from others that have been published, experienced, or observed. This could be books, ebooks, videos, annual reports. Primary sources is information and data that authors gather themselves from firsthand experience. So examples would be interviews, observations, surveys, questionnaires, and meetings. Research Methods are, are discussed later in the section titled Collecting Information Through Primary and Secondary Research. Once you have performed your research, it's time to outline, analyze, and draw conclusions. And an outline is a way of organizing your ideas by arranging your main topics and subtopics. Subtopics. Um, model document 10.3 is going to provide a sample outline.
So here is a sample outline. It has the title. It has Roman numerals with topics and then broken down into advantages and disadvantages and listing the advantages and disadvantages of each. So there are many ways to arrange your ideas. You can do compare and contrast. You can do topic functional. You can do chronological, best case, worst case. So we're going to look at figure 10.3, which lists strategies for organizing report findings. So here it shows you when it, you would use chronological. If you're showing time relationships, such as a five-year profit figures, or a series of events leading to a problem, you may want to use chronological. And then um, compare and contrast is best used for before and after scenarios or when comparing alternatives. And I'm not going to read through all of these, but I do want you to look over that and see when it's appropriate or when you should use each type of strategy. When you're concluding your report, you want to summarize your findings, draw your conclusions, and make res recommendations. And the way that you can conclude is going to be, it's going to depend on what the purpose of the report is and then what your need, readers need. A well-organized report with conclusions based on solid data will impress management and other decision makers. And then as far as graphics to clarify the report's message, um, you can design them to present numerical or quantitative data visually because this helps your readers to understand what they're reading. Um, also, visual elements and reports draw attention, they spark interest, and really does help the readers grasp the information quickly. So these can be, you can have drawings, graphs, maps, charts, photographs, and tables. And then, as far as once you get your report down, it's time to review it and edit it. So pay particular attention to the following, your, your format, um, very important when you're doing reports and letters to look at the format, to make sure it's easy for the readers to understand and to see. Consistency, graphics, heading levels, accuracy, and mechanics. And I wanted to mention that Grammar, punctuation, capitalization, and usage errors will damage the writer's credibility and might cause the reader to mistrust the report's content. So please pay attention to all of those when you're editing um, and checking the grammar. Here's a knowledge check. Read these. If you want to, pause the video and see if you can answer these. And then when you're ready to check your answers, press play. Number one is false. Formal reports are the products of thorough investigation and analysis. Number two is true. Number three is true. And number four is false. Outlines help writers arrange their ideas into main topics and subtopics.